Makers and welcome to The Quiet Corner. This is, generally speaking, a knitting and hand spinning podcast where I talk about my love of all things fiber from my little corner of the world in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, my name is Vanessa and other than on this channel you can find me at Sea Salt and Stone on Instagram. So a huge welcome to new and returning viewers and uh, this is, I guess, a holiday special, uh, which I'm calling a vlogcast rather than a podcast because it's not going to be my traditional podcast format. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go with the flow a bit more. Um, share with you some clips of our holiday preparations. Yeah, I'll just kind of be throwing in some check-ins with you about the fibery things that I've been making as I go. Uh, so let me know what you think about this uh, new format. Uh, it's something that I'm toying with a bit uh, because I'm trying to think of ways that would be more sustainable for me to continue sharing my fiber journey with you uh, once baby Schwartz arrives. Um, if you don't know, that's my husband, my husband and I's last name. So baby Schwartz arrives in the uh, middle of February, which is only a couple months away. Um, which is why I'm also out of breath <laughs> and will make shorter podcast clips more manageable, probably for you and for me. Um, but yeah, uh, welcome. And I'm going to kind of take you on my um, fiber journey, I guess, over the next uh, few weeks preparing for the holidays and just slowly kind of getting settled in for our first our first Christmas in our new house but also our first Christmas in Ottawa we've we've also traditionally uh, traveled to see our families at Christmas and and Dan's side of the family is on the west coast of Canada, uh, in BC and Alberta. And my family, as you know, is uh, in Prince Edward Island, most of them, my parents, and currently my brother. Uh, but my sister, luckily, is here in Ontario for school. So, yeah, given our, our current circumstances, uh, we won't be traveling home to see family for Christmas, which is really hard, uh, but we're going to try to make the best of it. So anyhow, thank you for, for joining me and uh, I hope you enjoy this holiday special.
recently purchased an Ashford Rigid Head Loom and it's set up. Uh, it's not finished. I, I can't stain the wood until after baby comes, so that'll probably be like a spring-summer project, but I'm still going to use it before then. Um, and I'm also waiting on the loom stand to arrive, but that'll be, that's a couple weeks away. So I'll just be using it as a table loom for now. Uh, but that's my plan this afternoon, is to try to warp my loom for the very first time. And uh, I might take you along with me for a little bit of that. Uh, hopefully it goes well.
as you know, I have also been working on a, uh, a bigger batch of hand spun. It's a thick and thin DK to worsted weight. I just totally did it for fun, <laughs> uh, not paying attention at all to consistency. And I've ended up with three skeins for a total of 230 grams of DK to worsted weight. Uh, so I'm thinking that this might be a great little uh, baby sweater or cardigan project. And uh, I'm hoping to cast that on over the holidays. So this should be fun. I am on to the second dishcloth on my warp now. Um, so I thought I would just show you um, what I've done. It's, uh, I'm not really following a pattern, um, but I warped enough length for two dishcloths, I hope. <laughs> and um, I basically just counted out uh, for my warp um, a consistent number of threads in the cream color and then the mint and then uh, the navy blue, the mint again, and it made sure that the, I had the same count on this side um, of the warp as well. And it seems to be working out quite well. It's about, I think it was 19 or 20 inches wide. And I know that with cotton, uh, it will shrink quite a bit um, once it's washed and all of this uh, weaving will tighten up as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's gonna be a, a fair sized cloth. Um, for the first dishcloth that I did, which is now on, on the beam, I did the weft, which is the cotton that runs horizontal, um, all in cream. And now for this second cloth, my plan is to alternate colors. So I'm going to be using uh, the cream colored weft the mint colored weft, and then I'll do um, some blue weft as well, and just kind of alternate colors, um, likely in that order, until this cloth is done. Uh, another thing I'm trying out, I uh, to separate the cloths, the two different dish towels, I left this gap in the warp uh, and it's a few, only a few inches long, but I did hem stitch to finish the cloth down here, which you, you can see there. I hem stitched and I'm hem stitching again, and then I will be hem stitching at either end of both tea towels as well. Uh, what else can I say about this? Yeah, so when I finish the weaving, I should be able to just cut down the center and have uh, a short bit of fringe after the hem stitch on, on both ends of the tea towels. And then it should be finished. I'm going to try that out. Um, I know that uh, many weavers have said, you know, the best thing for a dishcloth is if you can uh, like do a proper hem with no fringe uh, on a sewing machine. But because I don't have a sewing machine, I'm going to try hem stitch with um, the alternative, which weavers have suggested, is just having a very short fringe uh, because the, that fringe can get a little messy over time. 
especially when it's like used for such a practical purpose. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how this uh, little project is coming along and I am just absolutely loving my time at the loom. Mm -hmm. I am in the process of making some meat pies for Christmas. Uh, so the meat is slow cooking today for about six hours. I've prepared the onions and the crusts are ready to go. They're low carb crusts though, so not exactly a traditional Acadian uh, meat pie, but I am uh, doing one thing that is traditional to my Prince Edward Island upbringing, which is to use this summer savory blend, uh, which the, the meat will be fried up with, uh, with onion and butter. Uh, and as far as I know, it is uh, something you can only find on the island. Um, or it's produced on the island and it's at least very difficult to find anywhere else. Um, so my, my uh, mother was very kind and she uh, picked some up for me and sent it in the mail and it arrived uh, just in time for meat pie weekend. Popping in to kind of uh, close out this little holiday special. I hope I hope you've enjoyed um, coming along with me with some holiday preparations and uh, just seeing what I've been up to uh, in terms of my fiber fun. Uh, yeah, we are. We're now just. Uh, waiting for our official holiday vacation to begin so we've got another week of work to go and then i'm taking a couple of weeks off and uh, dan will be taking at least one week um, the week of christmas so we're really really looking forward to that uh, downtime together uh, and yeah, what else can I say? I mean, I hope that you're all um, staying safe and warm and cozy indoors and that you're able to make the best of this season, even though, uh, like us, I'm sure you're not able to uh, gather with a lot of family members over the holidays. Uh, but I hope you find ways to um, feel grateful, feel joyful, uh, and to celebrate this season if you do celebrate. And uh, if not, um, happy holidays or happy Hanukkah or whatever you, you do celebrate. Um, I just hope that it's a, a special time uh, for you. Uh, to, yeah, reflect even on on this past year and prepare for new things to come in the new year. Uh, and I'm sure we're all hoping that that means a better 2021 than 2020 has been. Um, so I think I will leave it here. Um, wishing you all well and I uh, hope to see you 
again in the new year before baby arrives, uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what's possible. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care. Bye. Thank you.